G'day friends, welcome to the third video of the deluxe coloring cards. Today we're doing craft. Uh, we've done the cold press, we've done the hot press, and today's sample will be on the craft cardstock. This is the Recollections cardstock. It is my craft cardstock of choice. Uh, I realize craft isn't for everybody, uh, and tone papers in general, but the reason I love them is because it's really simple uh, to make something pop and it's a really easy way to color. I don't know if you've ever uh, kind of ventured into tone papers before but essentially you're already working with a color down. So uh, in this case it's this beautiful uh, brown and uh, sometimes you can get gray toned papers. There are lots of different vari variations on the, the actual color of brown of craft paper but this is the one that I love and this is the one that works really well with a lot of my mediums like the uh, pencils, the jelly roll pens, the paint markers. I have done light washes of watercolor, you'll see in this. There's some slight warping with the watercolor, but if you tape it down, honestly, you can kind of get away with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not a watercolor paper. <laughs> I just I just do it because I know it can withstand it and it doesn't pill. But uh, that's up to you if you want to try some watercolor. The washes, I mean, they don't retain a lot of that watercolor texture. You're just adding some more color on there. And it's fun to play with some of your lighter watercolors, like the pastels, um, because they're often filled with white to make them pastel. And uh, the white shows up on the craft. So... Uh, that's what I think I love about them. It's just simple to make things pop because in essence, if, you're, if you've ever ske sketched on a toned paper, uh, you know that you're already working with the mid-tone, so all you really have to add are the highlights and shadows and you've got something that looks very effective for not a lot of work. Um, so here the mid-tone is this brown, so I'm using that as a, as a skin tone because I can. It's, it looks lovely. And all I'm adding is highlights and shadows. For the highlights, I've used like a white and a light yellow. Or I think I go back in and add the light yellow, maybe. Or maybe I don't. I've got it there as an option if I felt like it. Um, but in the shadows, I've added like this pink and this light purple and the blue, like this teal color or this really light electric blue. Honestly, I don't remember what it's called. These are Faber-Castell polychromos pencils. If you're curious, they're super expensive. I'm not telling you to go out and buy them, but they are my favorite, favorite colored pencil. They're oil-based, um, so they're very, very different to a lot of the things you might have used before. They go on so smooth. They're such a dream to work with. The colors are so beautiful, but um, either way. Now I'm showing you that uh, I just taped it down and I'm gonna do some light watercolor, uh, just some washes. And I wanted it to retain some of that like pink and white uh, kind of blended texture, but you will see once it dries, it does soak into the paper a little bit. So I go in with a couple of layers. Um, experiment with the craft, go nuts with some of your watercolors, see what you prefer. Uh, honestly, coloring styles are such personal preference, so it's kind of redundant for me to sit here and say this is or isn't going to work for you because you will color in very differently to the way that I do. Um, I can be very very heavy handed, very careless. Um, I can really push my pencils into the paper and you know, it, it, it's different for everybody. So I don't want to, I don't want to promise you that this might be your thing, but I also don't want to discount, I don't want to discredit it for you before you've had the chance to try it. If you want to try it, you'll try it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but either way, the craft is one of the, um, the options for you because I do love to work with it. And like I said, it is a great way to make things pop. Now, this video is a classic case of me being me and going way too far. I should have stopped when I just colored in her skin and then left it and did one of those in-process photos <laughs> and then called that a day because I loved the way the skin looks. And I'm going in to darken some of those uh, shadows up and add some more uh, depth to the color because once I started adding, adding in all the rest of the color, what I loved about the skin became so dull and muted. Um, and the skin to me, I mean, with all those colors in there, it looked like this vibrant uh, neon pixie kind of rave glowing skin. I loved it. Um, and then I kind of just went overboard with the rest. At the end of this, it honestly looks like she's some fairy getting decorated by these tulip creatures going to some bubble discotheque, bubblegum... It's, it's crazy. It just looks so nuts. I th my problem was I thought I hadn't added enough. <laughs> Which is all my, is my problem. I always think I can fix something by just adding more to it. Uh, but it is not the case. And I just, I was kind of struggle street through this. But I do like the sample in the end. It's crazy, but it's also very, it's very on brand. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to show you. I think what I was so carried away with showing you was all the different things that are great to use with the craft paper. So these Sakura Souffle pens, any of your jelly pens that you, um, that you find just sit on your desk and you don't use very often, lots of metallic ones. It's so much easier to make things pop on on toned paper than it is to make it pop on white because white is a, it's very stark. Like when you're using lots of pastels and 
uh, you know, light tones, they don't tend to show up well on a lighter surface. Um, but when they used on something that is a, a darker background, obviously they show up a little bit better. But I don't love to do things on black and black. I mean, I don't know many people that use black coloring sheets. <laughs> um, but this is such a great mid ground. You're kind of getting the opportunity to play with all of the stuff that doesn't necessarily make you feel uh, super accomplished on white paper, <laughs> um, but it's really easy to lay down on craft. And uh, a lot of these neon stuff as well looks really, really great on the craft paper. So um, whilst this isn't my absolute favorite sample, and uh, I think it's more just a video showing how overboard I can go. I mean, I add everything and the kitchen sink in this video. Um, but I think this sample is good just to show you that there are a bunch of different mediums you can use. You can even do light watercolor washes if you're okay with a slight bit of buckling. Make sure you tape it down like I said in the last video. Um, the first paper, the cold, the Canson cold press paper, you can get away with not taping down. It will stand up to some water. I've used that paper through uh, my entire Inktober series. And uh, you could see on those videos, if you want to go back and watch them, I really did add a lot of water to some of those things. And I only heat dried them with a, a hair dryer, not even a heat tool. But maybe that might change now with the heat tool because it does get a lot hotter than the hair dryer did. I'm not sure. You might have to experiment with that. But from what I do remember, and I use this paper all the time, the cold press doesn't need a lot of taping down, I find, if you're just going to do some light washes and, you know, you're not going to drench the paper. The reason I, I would advocate taping down, you know, the craft if you want to do a light wash or the Fabriano is because it's just, it's thinner than the cold press. Um, and it, it's just always the way when you're using water. So um, you may think I'm harping on about it, but I honestly, I just don't want you to take these coloring sheets and just go super nuts on them and then tell me that you said they were waterproof because I can already anticipate, believe me, I've, I've been uh, making products for long enough now that I, I feel like long enough. It's been a year, but let's just say long enough. I can anticipate a lot of the issues and sometimes I think when I show you samples and when I show you examples, maybe I leave out uh, a few of the things that I consider to be very obvious and so I do want to just reiterate the things that maybe I think is obvious but maybe you might miss because I, uh, I, I can totally take the blame for that. Sometimes I, I just do it without thinking because I think everyone knows that. So uh, that's why I just want to say tape it down if you're scared that you might get some crazy warping. If not, go for gold. Um, if you're going to do things like, I mean, the craft paper, only if you're doing watercolor. If you're going to do paint pens, you don't need to tape it down. If you're going to do pens or pencils, obviously, I mean, that's not going to compromise the structure of the paper. So um, for the craft specifically, and even for the Fabriano, the hot press, if you're just going to use alcohol markers, you don't need to tape that down. I might put something underneath it so you don't, uh, your alcohol markers don't bleed through onto a table. I have definitely ruined a table before with that. <laughs> um, it's surprising how alcohol markers won't come off a a stainless table, but we won't go into that. Um, anyway, so or maybe they would. Now that I'm thinking about it, there's probably some kind of solution that would take that off. Either way, that table is long gone, so not my problem. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to the craft cardstock. Oh, the white gel pen. How could I miss that? I mean, you could just go nuts with your white gel pen and just add in lots of highlights. There's so many fun things you can do just to uh, pop these out. I find that the craft is better for people that have maybe a bit more of an abstract coloring style that don't want to uh, sit down and color traditionally as in, you know, find a skin tone, find a hair color, color the flowers like florals and, you know, doing everything that would be uh, kind of straightforward. I feel like if you're into like neon colors or you're into abstract coloring and uh, paint splatters and stuff like that, you're using a lot of metallics, I think the craft might be a bit more fun for you to try. But um, I think it's going to be personal preference, to be honest, because toned papers are just, are just that. But what I want to... Uh, reiterate is that if you if you have a toned paper and you don't feel the need to try a coloring sheet um you can just do me a favor <laughs> if you're curious at all uh to experiment with toned paper take it out draw what you would normally draw and then take some shadow colors and take some highlight colors so some you know deeper maybe a, maybe two deeper colors maybe a purple and a blue and then take some lighter colors like maybe a, a light yellow and a white Put those in your shadows and highlights and then just tell me what you think. Because um, I often find that you can get away with so much on the toned paper. You really don't have to do a lot of work and it just looks nice. It's an aesthetic. It's not going to be for everyone. It's not going to um, 
I mean, sometimes it might approach a bit of realism. A lot, I see a lot of people that do um, charcoal portraits using toned paper. So that's why I know it's just such a great thing for um, shadows and highlights and a lot of portraits and a lot of um, easy drawings. You can kind of get away with it. <laughs> Has this whole video just been me telling you how to cheat at colouring? <laughs> uh, no, I just wanted to say the craft is there because there are a ton of things that I like to do with it. If you feel like trying them, um, I would love for you to try them as well. Alright, I'm going to leave it there. If you liked this video, if you like colouring cards, if you like me, if you like cats, if you like arts and crafts, please give the video a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you are more than welcome to do that. In fact, I love it. And if you want to hit the notification bell, that will just make sure you are notified every time I upload a video, which I think is about two to three times a week, uh, depending on my schedule and how many crazy things I've decided to do that week. <laughs> um, but pretty often, I'd say it's pretty regular these days. So if that's something you feel like doing, uh, please feel free. I hope you enjoyed the coloring cards and I can't wait to release them. I will do my absolute best to have as many available as I can during the restock. Um, but these are something that I can produce from my house. So um, they should be good to go as long as I get some spare moments. So if you miss out, please don't stress. They will come back. They're easy enough for me to, I mean, not easy. They take time, but <laughs> they are, it's manageable for me to get these restocked in the store. So um, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Let me know if you're more curious about hot press, cold press, or craft. If you just leave one of those words down there, that will give me a good indication of which I should probably stock up more on just so you don't miss out. So please leave that in the comments below, etc, etc, etc. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.